This is SUAS News, and here are the top news stories of the week. On Tuesday this week, AeroViment officially unveiled their new miniature electric quadcopter, the Snipe Nano Quad. According to the company, it is a field-rugged unmanned aircraft system designed to support close-range intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance missions. Equipped with electro-optical, low-light capable and long-wave infrared sensors and an integrated tilt mechanism, Snipe can relay high-resolution images and record real-time video both day and night. In addition, Snipe's integrated UHF radio provides for non-line-of-sight operation. The software-defined radio, or SDR, allows Snipe to be sold commercially and allows for flexibility when it comes to local radio spectrum regulations. Weighing in at 140 grams or 5 ounces, AeroVibement claims the system can reach flight speeds of over 20 miles per hour, a range of over 1 kilometer and flight time of about 15 minutes. The company also says that Snipe is very quiet, even in environments with minimal ambient noise, and that it can handle winds of over 15 miles per hour and gusts of up to 20 miles per hour. The first delivery of 20 Snipe systems to a US government customer took place in April and the Snipe will be available to order fall 2017. If you fly a Puma for the Army, that's your job, that's your MOS. The guys that fly Snipe aren't necessarily UAV guys. They're guys with a UAV. And that's fundamentally different from our other products. It's gonna be something that they own. It's organic to them. They decide when it flies and where it flies. They don't have to wait for anybody's or ask anybody's permission to fly it. It augments their ability to do their job. Alta UAS's VTOL system, called Transition, is getting around, this time in Nevada in the US. Valmy Resources Inc. this week conducted a successful test flight of one of the five commercial base units the company purchased from Alta UAS. The test flight was held in conjunction with Praxis Aerospace Concepts. Valmy will be incorporating five of the featured aircraft as it initiates commercial operations, offering a combination of unmanned vehicles, components and services. Alti's next generation transition UAV features an advanced and efficient fixed wing system with vertical takeoff and land capability. The transition has been well proven with confirmed flight performance and endurance of up to 7 hours and 500 km range per flight. The transition is made from high grade materials using unique proprietary techniques to ensure quality and reliability. An advanced aerodynamic design allows for low stall speeds, efficient crews with very low drag, excellent stability and extremely low weight. The airframe is modular and can be rapidly deployed from case to air in under 10 minutes with only two operators required. I visited Alta UAS in October of last year down in Nizna, South Africa to get a first hand look at the transition and I also had a chat with Duran Duvillias, the company's CEO. You can find a link to that video in the description below, as well as in the playlist for this week's news roundup. Royal Air Force Station Shawbury, home of the UK's Defence Flying School, recently published a drone safety leaflet pointing out where drone operators might be more likely to find themselves in conflict with manned aircraft within Low Flying Area 9. This is a region in central England that surrounds several airfields connected with Royal Air Force flight training, including the famous Mach Loop that you are seeing right now. The leaflet is clear and concise, with the distance and altitude advice being very well represented. This past Tuesday, we had the author of the leaflet, RAF Shawbury Station Safety Officer, Squadron Leader Gary James, on our weekly live show, Drone Stuff This Week. Squadron Leader James gave us some insights into his thinking around the safety leaflet, and how RAF Shawbury is dealing with the uptake in drone flying in their various airspaces. Check out the show via the link in the description below, or in the playlist for this week's news roundup. Edmonton International Airport in Alberta, Canada will be one of the first ever airports in the world to integrate a full suite of unmanned aerial system services into their daily airport operations. Starting in Q2 of 2017, Clear Flight Solutions and Arium Analytics will focus on safely integrating UAS technology at the airport. The primary focus will be on enhancing Edmonton Airport's Wildlife Management Plan. The airport's wildlife management plan will integrate the Clear Flight Solutions Robird technology to guide birds safely away from air traffic while discouraging nesting near air side operations and glide paths. According to Clear Flight Solutions, the Robird has been proven around the globe to be an effective, ecologically friendly method of bird control. 
The high-tech Robird mimics the flight of an actual falcon in realistic fashion, making its flight behavior so indistinguishable from its natural counterpart that other birds believe that their natural enemy is present in the area. As part of the integrated suite of services, CFS and Arium will also be providing UAS mapping and inspection services to support Edmonton Airport's maintenance programs and future economic development efforts. Staying in Canada, the International Civil Aviation Organization, also known as ICAO, will be hosting their first unmanned aircraft system industry symposium called UAS 2017 and Drone Enable from 22 to 23 September this year. The symposium will take place at ICAO's headquarters in Montreal, Canada. The symposium will provide an opportunity for states, international organizations, industry, academia, and other stakeholders to share their research, best practices, and lessons learned related to Drone Traffic Management Systems, or UTMs. The ICAO press release states that speakers will be selected from submissions in response to the UTM request for information, which you can find via the link in the description below. According to ICAO, maturity of proposed solutions, potential for global application, as well as supporting infrastructure requirements will be factored into the speaker selection process. Attention will be given to defining a framework for a UAS traffic management environment. Key supporting functions such as registration system, ability to remotely identify and track unmanned aircraft, communication systems and geofencing-like systems will be included. Commercial UAV manufacturer Dragonfly Innovations Inc. this week announced the development of new additions to their product line. According to Dragonfly, these new products are purpose-built to save time and money for operators, while improving the quality of mission-critical data used within the many industries the company serves. The company's new handheld universal control system enables the user to operate the Tango 2 fixed wing, the Dragon Scout ground-based robot, or any of the Dragonfly multi-rotor platforms, including the Dragonfly Commander. According to Dragonfly, the electric Tango 2 fixed-wing aircraft is a high-endurance, multi-battery SUAS, capable of carrying a wide variety of payloads, as well as slow flight operations, and can be used for tactical operations, search and rescue, agriculture, industrial inspection, surveying and mapping, and aerial 3D modeling. The company claims that the aircraft will fly for two to three hours with standard battery packs, four to six hours with additional batteries, and over 14 hours with solar panel add-ons. The tandem wing configuration enables the aircraft to fly at slower air speeds, which supports greater image resolution and precision. The system also features a modular payload bay and has a digital video downlink with a claimed range of 5 kilometers. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Drone and Sundry, and also check out our weekly live show called Drone Stuff This Week, where SUAS News editor Gary Mortimer chats to industry experts and insiders on drone world happenings.